Thank you for sharing Samson's village, a village that extends around the world, under the sea, into the cosmos, and beyond. Let's um, see the hands of everyone who helped at an earlier stage in life to change Samson's diapers. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, well, we've, we've got several. Um, thank you for being here. Some relationships only last a moment. Some relationships, as with those who raise their hands, last a lifetime. And some relationships last forever. As a kid, I would play with my friends at Bryan Park. Bobby Brown lived across the street from the park, and we often found our way to his home for snacks. We grew up together. Bobby's father was a star Indiana University football player. And as a growing up, he became an assistant coach to the team. I was certain Mr. Brown was a celebrity, immortal. When Bobby and I turned 18, Bobby went off to Vietnam to fight for his country. The fight ended with Bobby's death. You will find Bobby's name carved into the limestone on the Vietnam Memorial on the downtown square. When I received the news of Bobby's death, I was numb. How can this be? How can the world even continue to exist in the absence of Bobby? In the absence of Samson? Yet the world is still here, functioning. In fact, appearing to act as if nothing happened. How can this reality on the outside be when my inside, everything is screaming, nothing is the same. There is a hole in my heart. Yet I'm learning that if I am willing to peer through that hole long enough, and deeply enough, if I am willing to stay awake in the classroom of life, I may discover something precious. If I prematurely attempt to return to normal and avoid this pain, I fall asleep in the classroom of life and miss the lesson. After Bobby's death, I wanted to communicate something comforting to his mother, Mrs. Brown. I remember sitting at the desk in my room on South Woodlawn Avenue up the street from Bryant Park, attempting to write her a letter. By this time, the larger than life, Mr. Brown had died of a heart attack. And I searched for words to make sense of Bobby's death. Something finally did go in the mail, but mostly I experienced emptiness and frustration with the truth that all of this was too much and out of my control, I had no good words. Something I have reluctantly come to grasp 
and something I believe Samson also experienced is that there is nothing more challenging than to live a normal day of normal life, particularly when we choose to be awake through the experience. Many do not. On the surface of life, we may be very, very busy, yet asleep. Some sleep through an entire lifetime and all the normal days that make up a lifetime, always suspecting that real life is coming sometime in the future in some other set of circumstances, in some other world after I die. In this posture, we miss something, something special, our real lives, our normal lives. We sleep through our lives because being awake involves embracing all the pain and the suffering and the heartbreak ours, and others. Life can feel like it is too much. This is something Samson understood very well. An awareness that grew within him these past several years. We all need some help to manage the challenge of daily normal life. There is some help that is not so good for us. Where we go to receive help makes all the difference. At an earlier stage in life, I swam many mornings at the YMCA prior to going to work. I often encountered Don Stones, who shared the locker room bench where we would both begin and end our workouts. Don was a police officer with the Bloomington Police Force. Since those days of sharing the locker room bench, I have learned that neither of our persistent daily workouts could save us from the ultimate reality of death. Don died in 2018. But Don once shared some deep wisdom with me from his grandmother, Grandma Stone. As he was growing up, Grandma Stone would instruct Don with this counsel. Short time here, long time gone. Short time here, Long time gone. Now, I'm not certain anyone has ever said anything more profound and true than Grandma Stone. When I think about where I was 100 years ago, I sort of get it. When I think about where I will be 100 years from now, I sort of get it. Short time here. Long time gone. This wisdom from Grandma Stone can serve to unlock the mystery of forever. Forever doesn't happen somewhere else. Forever doesn't happen in another time in the future. Forever doesn't happen in a universe next door. Forever happens now, in this moment, in this place, in this time, only now. Forever happens now or it doesn't happen. Forever is actually not a long time. No. Forever is no time. Think about that. No time. You can't think about it, can you? It's unthinkable. 
it is important to think about the unthinkable because if we only think about what we can think, we don't grow. We grow by thinking about that which we cannot think. It's unthinkable because in thinking about the unthinkable, we are delivered to a very deep place, a place we cannot get to through human thought or feeling, however intense those feelings may be. Sometimes thoughts and feelings can provide a gateway into something much deeper, something unthinkable, something unspeakable. No time is unthinkable. Death is unthinkable. And while we cannot think about these realities, we can get a glimpse, a glimpse of death, a glimpse of forever. And in this glimpse, this glimpse has the possibility of changing us, of transforming us, of transforming our being and taking us on a, on a deep journey, a journey for which we each hunger. And Samson can be our guide. Samson, as we have been accustomed to knowing him, has left us. He has left us and has entered the long time gone. So why are we here? Our friend, our buddy, our daddy, our son, our lover, our grandson, our fill in the blank is gone. But we are here and Samson is not. We all get this. And because we get this, we are sad. Our hearts are broken. We experience the pain, the loneliness, the abandonment. We come together to grieve. Samson's life is complete. Beginning, middle, and end. It is finished. Nothing to add. Nothing to subtract. The first chapter and the last chapter and all the chapters in between have all been written. The work and creativity of Samson's life is now unchangeable. No more possibility of messing up. No more possibility of accomplishment. We are here to grieve our loss. And yet, we are also here because something of Samson lingers. That which lingers, that which continues to hang around, is something we call presence. Presence is real. Our grief and our sorrow over Samson's absence can, if we are willing, deliver us to the truth of presence. Presence is actually more real, more enduring than all the stuff that goes away. A physical body, a conscious mind, a living, breathing, thinking, feeling, human being, all gone. But this unchanging, invisible, infinite presence refuses to disappear. It is this lingering presence of Samson we can, if we choose, relate ourselves to. Samson is now, as he has always been, a part of forever, a child of forever, a messenger of the deep. Forever does not forget anything or anyone. Even though you and I may not remember what we had for lunch yesterday, forever knows. Each moment is recorded in forever. This moment we are sharing is as fast as it is revealed, recorded in forever. It just is. Our forever doesn't happen after we die. It is manifest right now. I have now lived long enough that many 
maybe most of my closest friends and teachers, the ones whose voices arise any time of the day or night from my deepest interior, they are dead, invisible, no longer manifest in a physical body. When they were alive and walking around, I could visit them whenever I could get on their schedule or they could get on mine. Sometimes we would wait days, weeks, months, years to get together and share and exchange. But here is the funny thing about someone who has completed their life and become a messenger of the deep. Now their voice and their presence is available anytime. All the time, whenever I can make myself available to receive it, and not just to me, but anyone else as well, in death they become omnipresent. In this new relationship, there is a connection with presence not limited by the boundaries of time and space forever becomes the most real context. We can each choose to personally have and practice a relationship to forever, to the one who is now crossed over into timelessness. If our love connection is strong, our loved one can become our guide and our helper as we peer beneath the surface of life and explore a deeper journey, a journey for which our hunger is great. Most of my helpers these days are invisible. This may feel like a lot to take in, but Samson has become a messenger of the deep, capable of communications that are clear, not muddled by human personality, ego, personal feelings, or vanity. Just a pure resonance from deepest reality. So let's close our time together by practicing our new relationship with Samson. Life can feel like it is too much. The challenge of living a normal day as an awake being can be overwhelming. But when life seems to be too much, there is some place we can always go. It is reliable. It is trustworthy. It will never fail us. It has the possibility of recreating us. We often can find this place by first closing our eyes, just like we do when we go to sleep. So please take a moment to simply relax into the space where you are and become still. In this stillness, please allow your eyes to gently close. As we practice together a new relationship with Samson, it is just fine if we wish to talk to Samson, and it is possible in a deep place you may hear him talking back. I will help us into some silence, and then later, should you hear some special music, you can open your eyes and return to this normal, everyday world. The music will alert you. But for the moment, allow your attention to rest upon your breath. And allow your breath to lead you into some deep interior space. Hey, Samson. Hey, buddy. A lot of us 
Your friends and family are here right now. Most of us bear some hurting hearts. Hearts hurting because your presence still lingers. And we are just beginning to discover what to do with it. We close our eyes and we are right here in forever. Over there, we encounter the Big Bang. We go a little deeper and encounter the last flicker of the last star in the universe. The beginning of the beginning and the end of the end. No more time. In this awareness, we grasp that we remain on a journey with you a journey into the deep place that is now your forever home. Thanks for spending some time with us here prior to becoming a messenger of the deep. We are learning to practice connecting with you in this invisible, interior, and infinite place. We are ready to grow. Thanks for taking us on our journey. We will continue to connect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is.